Let's start with the Hurricane Saga because it looks like there's movement in that one. There's a little bit of movement. Maybe not by much, but again, uh, but let me start with you. Um, the, the, what's it called now? Uh, the, uh, big guns, the top brass from Bayern Munich mm. were in London yesterday. They had discussions. Yeah. They started discussions were positive, but they also said that both parties are still miles apart in terms of valuation 25 million pounds apart actually in terms of valuation but um by america showing their interest in the player and um, again it just looks like a matter of time before this deal gets done but like you have been saying do we pay that money daniel levy is not a, it's not somebody who pay that money last last uh, <laughs> Anthony <Dobio. laughs> and see i just thought it was a hundred million <laughs> actually tottenham was supposed to want 120 million mm. to 130 million mm. for hurricane mm. That would cover you know the actual fee and the add-ons and what of you and and i'll keep saying it the iraqi by munich can travel to england <laughs> 10 times in a day for the rest of the week if they do not cough up that cash <laughs> we should forget see, see, see we've said it here several times that the levy is not a man you want to mess with in terms of negotiation you will pay that money <laughs> iraqi is a priced asset but again for the Levy to even have a seat down and and have a conversation yeah. with those from Bayern Munich, yeah. it, it does show that they're ready to meet halfway. Mm. Yeah, and I don't know. My projection is maybe between 110 and 120. Mm. I, I think I, I think that will get the deal done. Mm. But Bayern Munich like it's the like wrong. We should go and call the prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the funny thing about this deal is that will happen. They will pay them the funny thing about this hurricane saga is that Tottenham Hotspur don't have time. Mm. Bayern have time mm. because Bayern can delay, delay and pay the money on deadline day. We Tottenham have enough time for replacement. Mm. See, at this point in time, I, I, I do feel Spurs feel they have a couple of players who can occupy that role and they would have had their targets on ground already. Oh, but they will target actually. Uh, they will play the See, they will. They will uh, you know, and 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 top now. I'm not. Be, I'm not delaying just to delay. They want the pay the money. You get your money. Man. So it's not. It's not. I, like I said, Bayern are trying to be smart. Yeah. Exactly. Bayern will pay the money for the player. But we hear that um, um, if they get that windfall, they'll use that money to maybe replenish their squad. We hear they will be looking at um, Frank Kessie to bolster their midfield team a long way to bolster their defense, and they may pay fifty million pounds for Brennan Brennan Johnson from. Um, Nottingham Forest again. It's a huge, it's a huge step down in quality. But that guy is, is a prospect too. Brennan, Brennan, we saw him last season. He's still the sort of it's not even close. Not not even still, close. still not the sort of. But I, I, see, I think Tottenham should go out there, and get a proper striker. Mm. We've talked a lot about Taremi and what of you. Mm. Yes, it, it, the, uh, the eight factor might not be on the side, mm. but again, it brings in a lot, a whole lot of quality, and it would come cheap. For Tottenham Spurs, for Tyrone, it shouldn't cost more than twenty to twenty-five million. But again, if Porto hear that Spurs have sold a hurricane for hundred and twenty million, <laughs> no, 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 not, then maybe can negotiate both ways as well. Too, yeah. So I don't think that would be a problem. And, and honestly, I think rather than you know throwing all that money to get a direct re replacement for Hurricane, I think it pays to build the squad with that money. And that's what Liverpool did. They got Coutinho money, they bought Van Dijk, they bought Alisson, they bought a lot of players. I think they bought Fabinho with that did, money did, as well. Did, did, did they buy, uh, uh, what was it called, Van Dijk with yes, Coutinho's money? Yes, yes, Van Dijk was not, uh, Van Dijk did not play with Coutinho. Uh, no, money. I'm thinking that, we, okay, it was Suarez's money that they wasted. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah, it was Suarez's money. <laughs> that they bought, they I bought, know they wasted one. They bought, they bought Balotelli, they bought Ricky Lambert, they bought a lot of... Lalana. Uh, 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 but anyway... <laughs> uh, let's go to Manchester United. We hear Rasmus Hoyland is expected in the UK later today ahead of his medical with Manchester United. He will then sign a five-year contract with the option of a further 12 months. United are paying £64 million pounds up front plus... Eight million pounds in performance related add ons to take the whole package up to 72 million pounds. So, we won't talk about this already. We've talked about it before. So, we'll just leave it alone and keep it moving. Let's go to Chelsea very quickly. And it's good to have a Chelsea fan in the studio. Um, Chelsea are looking at um, a swap deal plus money involving the Lukaku and Dusan Blahovic. I mean, um, with the way Chelsea fans have been waxing really lyrical about um, Michael Cherry, <laughs> Nicola Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> You would think <laughs> you would think that that guy is is the best thing since sliced bread or a while ago. Yeah, he is. But again, why are they looking for a player like um, Dusan Vlahovic? Um, if you have Michael Jackson, sorry, Nikola Jackson there. 
Okay, if you look at the current Chelsea squad now, they only have two strikers mm. and two proper Arsenal strikers, and that is Nicolas Jackson and Amando Broja, mm. who is just returning from injury. And Amando Broja is young, is a prospect. So why keep two prospective players? Yes, Nicolas Jackson is good, the signs are good, but he's still very young, not so experienced. And the manager has been talking about wanting experience in that squad. So Vlaovic is not so old, he's not so young, mm. he's a bit more experienced than both Amando Broja and, uh, and Nicolas Jackson. So that is the idea behind Vlaovic. And Vlaovic is also good enough to start at that Chelsea uh, team but the problem is just like I told you this morning of uh, Jackson start for me and I think that's the same across the board for a lot of Chelsea fans which what we've seen in this preseason Jackson or the way Nicholas Jackson <laughs> I give it I give it three weeks I will not say more than that um let's go to Liverpool buddy um Fabinho of course we know has completed his move to Al Hilal Al Hilal Ali Tihad, thank you very much. He's going to move to Ali Tihad, um, made a long and, you know, whatever it is, uh, emotional note on social media. Um, they are looking at, um, Romeo Lavia as a replacement for Fabinho. We've talked about him already, so we're not about it. But the big news from Liverpool is that, um, they have a new captain. Um, Jordan, Jordan Henderson has left. So, uh, Roger Van Dyke is the captain of Liverpool. His assistant will be Trent Alexander Arnold. That's where I'm going, actually. Could there have been more experienced players? To be given the assistant captaincy at Liverpool than Trent. Trent is what, 24? Um, yes, the local boy, Scouser and all of that was a ball boy for Liverpool as well. Um, and then made the team as well. So there's the emotional and the sentimental part of it. But in reality, Mohamed Salah, Alison Becker, um, what's his name now? Andrew Robertson. Um, there are players who you would have thought uh, should be assistant captain given the experience. Oh, yeah. Um, and you're absolutely, you're absolutely spot on, um, Anthony. But again, a lot of the names you rolled out, I think I'll lean more towards Robertson. Mm. Why he's got that natural leadership quality. Mm. The fact that at every given point in time, he, is too, he has stood up for the rest of the Liverpool team mm. when the issues on the pitch and what of you. Yes, it might not be English, but again, it all boils down to quality. Yeah. Trent, uh, Trent seems so soft. Mm. Like it looks so soft uh, to me. And when you're talking about leading the team, mm. it comes with some level of character as well. Mm. And not just character, it comes with the level of burden. Can Trent wear those boots when <laughs> when the situation arises? Mm. So uh, the, the, the team knows best. Maybe they have to vote or whatever. But no, again, no, no. Klopp, Klopp, before he made, he made the announcement, Klopp said there's no vote. That he has his decision already and he will announce it to the players. So, he said as much. Okay, good luck to him. Uh, Salah would have been a better option for uh, me. You know, as a person, person, I think Robertson. What, what, the thing with Liverpool is that they have a leadership group. <laughs> it's weird. Yes. <laughs> they have a leadership group of five players. Um, it was, it was Henderson, it was, um, James Milner, it was Van Dyke, it was Robertson, and then it was Allison. Um, two have left. Which so is, Salah was, was never in the constitution. He wasn't, he wasn't in that leadership group, but now he's in the leadership group now. <laughs> now he's the captain and the vice, and then there's Alisson in there, there's Salah in there, and then there's Robertson in there as well. So those are the five players in the leadership group. Trent. Uh, <laughs> in the leadership group, they still call it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you, 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 wait, let's move on. I will not say anything. You will still call it. You can say that. <laughs> I will not say anything because we will not take something from Chelsea fans. We will save it for, for Ripley. So anyway, let's go to, um, other just making the rounds. Um, very quickly before starting taking calls. Burnley are close to agreeing a deal with Winger and Rush Townsend. Um, he's been training with the Clarence this summer after leaving Everton uh, following the expiration of his contract. And uh, he missed the entirety of last season because of an injury and last played competitive football in March of 2022. So he's been out injured for a long time, but good to see him back. And he's going to sign a deal with Burnley as well. Everton are also close to getting a player. His name is um, Yusuf Kemiti. He's a striker. And uh, we hear that um, they will be signing that. They've agreed to deal with Sporting Lisbon for the players. So that deal is expected to be done really, really soon as well. <laughs> committee. <laughs> it sounds like Committee Frog. Um, what else do we have? Um, let's also tell you that... Um, Levi well, Corwell has agreed a deal, a new six-year deal with um, Chelsea. Uh, for, so all the players, all the teams who are looking at um, Levi Corwell, well, he signed a deal with um, Chelsea, so he's not going anywhere. Um, a young player, a really good player, must be said. So we'll see how well he does next season as well. Yep. Yes, quickly before signing that deal, Pochettino had to you know, give him some some assurances that he was going to play, he was going to be a big part of the squad because he knew he had to and all of that mm-hmm. and he's a big part of the Chelsea project going forward. A less-sided uh, less uh, centre-back, 
the only person he has to compete with now is uh, Ben Abadia Shield. So, mm. we, which is something that is good for Chelsea. Both of them have to compete for that position. Mm. We will start. It looks like Kobe will start because of Abadia Shield's injury, and he has not really been part of the. He has not been part of the preseason at all. All right, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's tell you that West Ham have rejected a 70 million pound offer from Info Milan for Gianluca Scamacca. That's interesting. Still with West Ham as well. They have said they are ready to walk away um, from Southampton if they continue to insist that um, they want 40 million pounds for their captain, oh. James Ward. But they insisted that they wanted the 105 million pounds for uh, the Rice. It's, it's, not do, it's not do as I say. It's not do as I do. It's do as I say. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but come to think of it, I, I still wonder why a lot of top clubs are not, you know, looking at uh, James Ward Prowse. They've never really looked at him because there's this media, there's this media narration of uh, Ward Prowse being, you know, they, they see him as only the dead boss specialist. And there's much more to what he does. He, 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 there's much more he's to what a, he he's does. He's a good tackler as well. He's a good creative player. There's much more to what he does at that level. West Ham, Burnley, Southampton. Yeah. In terms of you know the top, the really nah, top sides, nah, and not be not be that level. Yeah, exactly. Rice do and where he is last now. Don't be the level. And, and, and then what the Rice do? He led West Ham to a European trophy. Yeah. Okay. Well, plus led Southampton to relegation. That's a weekend way to put it. That wasn't his fault, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And then finally, Burnley are in talks over a season-long loan deal for um, Albert Sambi Lokonga. Um, we'll see. How that goes for Burnley. Burnley are really stacking up this season anyway. We'll see what they do. I'm really, that's one, what's one team I'm looking at. Um, this, aside from Liverpool, obviously, I'm really going to be tracking Burnley because I like, uh, Vincent Company as a manager. I like him as a player as well. Solid defender. And he seems like he's building a decent managerial career as well. So that's somebody I'll be tracking his career in the Premier League. Next Not time for Zupa as this one. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm looking at him with keen interest. Did you enjoy this video? Hit the subscribe button for more, leave a comment and like. Thank you.